And the findings from the committee was to go with a renovation um, for several reasons. One, it was able to accomplish the needs that we would have, uh, both for today and for the future, and also to think about from being fiscally responsible to the community members. I'd like to share a little bit about the facility timeline, if you could, thank you. Um, so the school, for many of you who may not know, was built in 1965, so that's over 55 years. And not much has been done to that school in that time period. If you look at 1968 to 1970, there was an addition that was done at that time to accommodate additional student enrollment. In 2012, there were some modular classrooms that were added. Um, that's where our music is now held. Our health students are out, out there, as well as some of the music programs. And in the last four years, there's been some safety renovations that were done. You might recall that the vestibule that was put into the memorial schools for the safety of the students and for the staff. Um, prior to that, anybody could enter the one main door, and now there's a vestibule holding area for, the, for people that are entering in that are visitors. Um, there was also some uh, HVAC work that had been done and some office entry facility things that had been renovated. And then in 2018, we added an additional modular to be able to put the band out there. Um, our band continues to grow year after year, and we're lucky to have several students that want to participate. But we simply ran out of room within the middle school, in the memorial school, so we decided to add the modular to be able to accommodate that. But continuing to put band-aids on things isn't going to solve the problem in the long term. Although we've been creative and innovative in how we've tried to approach continuing to accommodate our students, we can't continue to do that long term. And that's what the committee came up with for a recommendation. As many of you know, they always say pictures worth a thousand words, so if you haven't had the opportunity to come into the school and participate when we've had the open forums, we'd like for you to indulge with us for the next couple minutes to see a video that was put together um, by one of our own Pelham High School students, Mia Canaseso, coming from her viewpoint on what the middle school looked like. The second part is the space needs and the uh, existing conditions, which Deb will go over more of the conditions with you. But as you saw, we're not ADA compliance in some cases. There's no ADA compliance bathroom on the second floor. There's no elevator in the building. So if students have injuries, right now they have to take a lift. When that lift goes up and down, they have to shut down that stairwell. There's only one other entrance between the upstairs and downstairs for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students. So if there's one student using that lift to get up and down with nurse's supervision, they have to block that hallway and the students have to be rerouted, which causes crowding, traffic issues, they could be late to class, there's all kinds of a host of issues that could cause concern for that. Thanks, Candace. Thank you all for coming tonight. The existing conditions, it is a school that was built in 1965. Uh, the open for business in September of 66 and as um, I discussed with the PTA last night that makes it 53 years old the same age as myself sturdy however not quite as useful as I used to be um, so mechanical and all that we our facilities has done an amazing job keeping them as up-to-date as they possibly can but I know those sourcing parts starts to become very difficult and they're not systems that are old are not as efficient as modern systems. And this project will entail updating all those as well. Another thing that's very key to a middle school model is what are called team areas. And the middle school model um, uh, best practices are that you have a team area to uh, for kind of creates a school within a school, helps with um, you know the social part of things for students, and we don't have the ability to do that currently. Unfortunately, those storage areas have been converted into uh, learning spaces, and they are currently being used as learning spaces. There are extreme hot and cold sides of the building. Uh, some, you know, with the way the sun rotates and the fact that there's no insulation and the heat off the, the pavement, plus sometimes the uh, kitchen running, the boiler running, causes one side of the building to be extremely hot. Routinely in May, June, September, and October on those warm, um, those warm days, it, it's 90 plus degrees in some of those rooms. And I don't have the statistics off my head, but I know that that is not conducive and has proven and studies have proven that um, conditions like that are not conducive to the best learning. The kitchen, while serviceable in doing the job that we need it to do, is um, extremely inefficient. Uh, it is not ADA compliant either. The serving line is not accessible by a student in a wheelchair. 
if that stu we do have a student in a wheelchair, then someone has to get the food for that student and bring it to the table for them because they, so they, they're not, you know, it, it's isolating that student. The modulars, um, though I am extremely grateful and thankful to the voters for, for making sure that we had these for our students over the years. This is not the ideal situation uh, for learning for uh, several reasons, one of which is the library, which back in 65 was you know, amazing and awesome in, in the center of the school. And unfortunately, because we need, needed space for other programs, our library got moved out to one of the, to one of the portables. And the other model with a middle, for middle school now, and even for high school, if you look at our current high school, and the elementary school is to have that library and the media center kind of like the focal point in the center of your school and ours is in in the modular and we don't aren't even able to carry as many books as we'd like due to um, it being small in size one of the other big issues is security uh, we do the best we can there's cameras all over the place we have buzz-in systems we have staff paying attention however when due to today's safety standards to have a modular sitting out in the middle of your parking lot is not um, conducive to how we would want to have our safety standards. So how do we fix this problem? As Candace said, we did a study committee and we hired an architect. The architect sat down with administration, teachers, students, school board, um, and spent a lot of time talking and trying to develop a plan and a concept that would be best remedy to these situations. We did, as Candace stated, decide on a addition renovation as opposed to a new building uh, for cost reasons and we felt that we could um, take care of the needs with an addition renovation as opposed to a new building. The current building is 56,000 square feet we will be adding 44,000 square feet of space. So, you know, nearly doubling it. We'll be adding new LED lighting with controls, uh, ventilation, new ventilation systems, low flow fixtures, automating all the building systems. We'll have a lot of natural daylight. Um, so we will be changing the whole thing. This is the current uh, gymnasium. We'll now become a cafeteria. We'll be adding a new gym space, new locker rooms, new uh, uh, office for the phys ed teacher, new music, new band, new art room, the, um, I can't read over there, I forget. I, I'm nervous. The library. The library, well the library's Down uh, here, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so here's the new entrance, would be right here. It will be kind of like a town square. It'll be open, warm, inviting. We have the library here the cafeteria, the gymnasium, all this is able to be blocked off and be used for community space. Cost, as we said, is uh, 30 million 861. And you can see the breakdown of cost there. Um, Bonnet, Page and Stone is, has been um, hired. They also did our high school project. They did our high school project on time and under budget. And we were very pleased with them. We also have Trident Project Advantage Group uh, over being the overseer of the project, the owner's project manager. Um, we've used those uh, that Trident for a number of town and school projects and they have been fabulous to, to work with. And as stated before, Harriman is the, is the architect. And the, the million dollar question, tax impact. These are some, these are the, the facts. In year one, it's approximately 35 cents per thousand and you can see there, um, based on your assessed home value, what the estimated year one tax increase would be. And we also put year two, because that's usually the highest year, and then subsequently after that, it gradually dwindles down. We're looking at a 20-year bond, and uh, these rates were based on 3.75%. Uh, right now, uh, some bond rates are looking at 21 so let's uh, hope that we can get a bond rate that's more like 2.1 instead of 3.75. These are decisions that each household has to make themselves, you know, presented with the facts. 
you can make the decision that you feel best is for, for you and your, your family. The Budget uh, Committee wholeheartedly recommended, recommends that this uh, be adopted. 